Remember that the box plot is built off of the idea of the quartiles. And the quartiles, by their definition, will divide your data set into four equal parts, where each section is worth 25%. Now that's key for interpreting those box plots. So let me scroll down to our next problem right here. So when you look at a box plot, a box plot is just a graphical display using that five number summary. And I say just, but it's actually super powerful. It's become more and more popular, statistically speaking, for the last you know 20 years or so because it conveys so much information in a way that is resistant to outliers and shows outliers and doesn't get affected as much by them. So it's really powerful. All right, so how do you read the box plot? Well, there's a minimum on the left side. So the lowest mark on your graph, it could be a dot, it could be a star, it could be the whisker, it could be whatever, that will be your minimum. Then you're going to have Q1, which is the lower edge of the box, right? So that vertical line. Then you're going to have um, the center line of the box, which is the median line. Then you're going to have Q3, which is the upper edge of the box, and the max, which is the highest mark on the graph. Might be the end of the whisker, might not be the end of the whisker. Just depends. So there, I went back to our classic colors. <laughs> so Q1 is here at the green value, and I've labeled it. It was actually 76. This is the same data set we've been working with with our calculators. So let me remind you, stat, we already found the five number summary for this data set. The min was 54, Q1 was 76, the median was 84, the Q3 was 88.5, and the max was 93. So this is this exam data from before. So the lower edge of the box where this green line is, that's Q1. The mid middle center line of the box is the median, which is the center of your data set. And then Q3 is this purple line over here. And then the max is wherever that whisker goes, or if it stops going a whisker and it starts being a dot because there's an outlier, then that would be it. like it happens over here. This minimum is actually this black dot over here on the far left. That's the minimum. So that leads me to what are these other values? Well, this one's 56. That was the next data point. And remember, it was also an outlier. We just determined that. 54 and 56 were outliers. That's why in the box plot, they get little dots. Sometimes they're stars, sometimes they're dots. It just depends on how they're being drawn. So why is this going to 60? Why is it going to the fence of 57.25? Well, the fence is just a boundary zone, but 57.25 was not in the data set. You go to the next number in the data set that was not an outlier, which is 60. So 60 is where the whisker goes to, right? Not to um, 57.25. A lot of students think it should go to the fence, and that's not true, right? It has to go to a number that's in the data set, which is 60 which is putting the cart a little bit before the horse because I actually just answered E before I answered anything else. But that's all right. I'll put it in there right now. So the number it went to was 60 because 60 was the smallest data point that was in the data set that is above the, the lower fence, right? Do not extend to the fence itself unless that fence is part of the data set. There, I just added that little note in. And technically, it could be on the low or high side, or both. Um, this particular data set only had uh, lower fence issues. It had lower outliers. So we don't really have to worry about the high side on this data set. OK, so now let's look. What proportion of the scores will lie between 76 and 88.5? Well, it doesn't get much more basic than that, because remember, each of these sections, from the minimum to Q1 is 25%, from Q1 to the median, 25%, from the median to Q3, 25%, and so on. So it'll be 50%. I said earlier that the box represents the middle 50%, and that's exactly what this is, right? The box represents the middle 50%. by definition, right? Which is super useful for us because that's how we determine the inter the inner spread of our data set. All right, now what proportion of the z score or me of the scores lie above 76? Well, okay. 76 is right here at Q1, 
So 25% is in the left half of that box, 25% is in the right half of the box, and another 25% is on that whisker, so that's 75%. What about lie below 88.5? Well, again, 25% in the right half, 25% in the left half, and 25% is in this huge whisker, including those two dots. They count as part of that whisker. So that means that it's 75%. Now, what proportion of scores lie between 54 and 76? All right, 54 is right here at the minimum, 76 is Q1, so that would be 25%. Okay, so it's important to note, and I'll, I'll note it again in another page, but I'll just note it again here. Note, the outliers are part of the whiskers. There, type that in just for our own benefit. All right, so now you've learned how to read a box plot. In general, I don't have you draw them. I just want you to be able to read them and analyze them. Speaking of which, I mentioned on a previous page that the box plots are really powerful for being able to determine um, the shape of a distribution. So let's look and see what I meant by that. So this group at the top, these are skewed right and or positively skewed. They're, those two terms are interchangeable. So it's skewed to the high values, the high side. And you can tell because it'll have either the right or upper whisker, depending on which orientation it is. So we do left and right more in this class, but a lot of times they're going to do them up and down. It's fine. It works either way. But these are actually the identical box plots. These are This is an identical data set. It's just that on one time I had the program do it left to right, and then I had one time do it up to down, but it's identical otherwise. And you can see it's got a really long whisker on the high value side, so either up above or on the far right, right? Right it be end up being positive and positive. Positive for the x-axis, positive for the y-axis. So those two ways make it positively skewed. If it's symmetric, then the whiskers will be roughly equal and the box halves will be roughly equal. So there's a big caveat to that because it has to be approximately. And that's kind of a judgment call that we have to make, but nevertheless. Um, now keep in mind, there are actually lots of different symmetric distributions. There's symmetric, there's bell-shaped, um, excuse me, bell-shaped, uniform. You can actually have it have two modes and be symmetric. There's a lot of ways for symmetry to happen. So you don't necessarily know exactly what it looks like for a symmetric shape. All right, then there's skewed left. Skewed left will have a longer whisker and or box on the low side, on the left side or on the low side for negatively skewed, right? They, they, those terms are interchangeable. Both of these box plots are showing negative skew. Both of them are showing skewed left. I know it seems weird because this one on the right you think it's skewed down. It's not. It's skewed left. Left is just the generic term we mean for the low side, whatever, wherever those values are. So left and lower, right? So on the x-axis it's to the left, on the y-axis it's low. We kind of use those terms interchangeably. So if the whisker's longer on the left side, or if it's the box is longer on the left side, then it's skewed left. Now, if you're wondering, well, what if it's longer for the whisker on one side, but longer for the box on the other? It's a judgment call. Generally, we go with the whisker, because the whisker is usually showing more dramatic stuff. Um, but again, it's a judgment call. Actually, I'm going to type that up so that way um, it's going to be in the notes for future. So if the longer whisker and the larger half of the box conflict, you kind of have to make a judgment call. Often you go with the whisker, but that tends to be because the whisker is showing a more dramatic difference. So uh, let me see here. When you look at the top one here, that whisker on the right compared to the whisker on the left, it's so much longer on the right than it is on the left. Even though the box on the left is a touch bigger than the box on the right, you wouldn't use the box for, for showing skewed left, you'd use that whisker. So you go with whichever one's more dramatic. Eh, the middle one's mostly symmetric. And then 
over here on the bottom one, they're both big on the left side or the low side. So that one doesn't really show. But if they do conflict, you tend to go with whichever one's really dramatic, really different um, when it's compared to its counterpart. And that's usually the whisker, but not always. Um, and that's because the whisker contains the outliers, which is my next point, right? The, for purposes of determining shape, the outliers are part of the whisker. So you include them mentally in your visual. When you think of the whisker, think of it those dots as well. They count as part of the whisker's length. And that's one of the reasons that those whiskers are usually the more dramatic difference, because they're usually including, well, if there are outliers, they'll be in the whisker. All right, so now let's apply this to a box plot of four things simultaneously. Now this is a really powerful thing to be able to analyze because you're looking at four different groupings and being able to look at how they compare to each other. Now this particular thing, this were actual exam scores from fall 17. However, um, you could imagine they could be, you know, uh, presidents of one country versus presidents of another country or um, apples versus oranges versus grapes or whatever, you know, pick something. So we tend to use these tools a lot. They're very powerful. All right, so these are the actual exam scores for a sample of exams. I don't know if I, yeah, for a sample of students from fall 2017. So which exam had the lowest average? Well, that's an interesting word. Average means center. Right? When you talk about average, you're talking about a measure of center. And the measure of center shown in a box plot would be the median. Right? So let's just make a little quick note of that. What they're really talking about is the median. Okay, so then we want to look at the center line for each of the boxes. And the lowest one, the lowest center line, is actually at the final exam, and it looks like it's about 78. Speaking of which, notice that those tick marks are each worth 2, because it goes 70, 72, 74, 76, 78, 80. So that's what the tick marks are worth. All right, so the final exam had the lowest median at 78. Done. Now, which exam had the lowest score overall? Well, the lowest score overall would be the minimum. So now we look back up at the graphs, and notice the lowest value here at the exam 1 was in the 40s. Lowest exam for exam 2 was about 30. And then exam 3 happened, and the lowest exam score is right there, that little star, that first star. So it's at about, let's see, 22, 24, 25 or so. It's a little hard to judge without a ruler, but it looks like about 25. So that would be the lowest minimum. By the same token, I could have asked for the lowest maximum. The lowest maximum was actually the final exam at about a 95, in case you're interested. So it doesn't have to always be lowest for min and, and highest for max. So you could ask for lowest for max or highest for min. The highest minimum was actually the final at a, it's about a 49%. All right. As a matter of fact, I'll just make a little quick note of that, just so you can see that, you know, minimums are not always talking about the lowest. This one just was. But you could also talk about the highest min, and you could talk about the lowest and highest max. You could talk about the lowest and highest average. You could talk about, you know, a lot of things. All right. Now, which is the largest overall range? Well, the overall range would be uh, min to max. That's the distance from min to max. And we measure that different distance with a difference, right? Max minus min. Okay, so you take the edge of one side and the edge of the other. So you look from tip to tip on those whiskers. And that includes the outliers, don't forget. And since it includes the outliers, it's rather obviously exam three. Exam three has the largest span from lowest to highest out there. Okay, so exam three had the biggest min to max difference. It looks like it's about 98 on the high side to about 25% on the low side. Okay, so exam three. Now, which exam had the largest IQR? IQR is the box width. All right, so the width of the box would be those blue boxes in the middle. And again, it's kind of obvious, I mean, just visually looking at it. The widest box is exam two. So exam two, it had the widest um, box from uh, one side to the other. It looks like it's going from about, I don't know, 63, say, to about mm, maybe 88 or so. 
It's a little hard to judge. Again, I don't have a ruler on on me, so even if I did, you guys couldn't see it. So it, that, I think that's a pretty good guess. Again, you're just kind of eyeballing this, so don't expect perfection or anything. But do figure out what the tick marks are worth. That'll be key to figuring these out because that'll help you know that you know it's 80, 82, 84, 86, 88. You've got to always figure that out first. And the way you can do it is you can say, okay, how many sections are in there? There's four tick marks in between 80 and 90, so there's five sections. So you take the, di the difference, which is 10. Here, let me show you. You take, and you could do it for any one of these sections, but I'll do um, 90 take away 80. So I take 90, I take away 80, and then I divide it by sorry, 90, take away 80, and I divide by how many sections there were in there, which is 5. Not the number of tick marks, but the number of sections. So that I know each one was worth 2. Matter of fact, I'll make a little note of that up here at the top. There we go. And again, I didn't have to do it for 90 and 80. I could have done it for 80 and 70, 70 and 60. It doesn't really matter. But there's five sections in there because there's four tick marks in between those two numbers. So there's five sections and when you do that it's two and that helps you with figuring every, all the rest of the stuff out. Last but not least, what's the shape of every one of these distributions? Well, they're all skewed left. They all have longer tails on the left which is exam one, exam two, exam three, because those dots count as part of that tail. It's a very long whisker on that left side. Um, even in, even the final as well. Now the final has a conflict. If you look at the final, it's got a longer whisker on the left, but it's got a larger box on the right. But again, that whisker, if you compare the two boxes to each other, they're closest to the same size, relatively speaking, but those whiskers are very dramatically different. So you go with the whisker, the whisker wins. Right? The rest, none of them are even close. Right? The whisker, or the box is bigger on the left and the whisker is bigger on the left. Except for exam three, the box is actually pretty symmetric. It's a little bit bigger on the right maybe, but that whisker is huge. Right? Very dramatically large. So that is skewed left. So they are all skewed left. There, I wrote that up. So every graph was skewed left, either because they have longer whiskers on the left. See exam three and the final. Dramatically longer whiskers, I should say. Um, oh, sorry, I reversed that order. Either um, dramatically longer whiskers on the left, which was the case of exam three and the final, right? They were dramatically longer on the left, even though the box was a little bit bigger on the right, it didn't matter, the whisker was gonna win. Or, and or, the larger box halves are on the left, right? So in exam one and two, actually they had both whiskers and box halves longer on the left. So exam one and two are very skewed left by both measures. And so is exam three because of all those outliers. And so is the final because that whisker on the left is much more dramatic than the little box difference. And notice that that means that the median and the IQR, and therefore the five number summary, would be better measures of this data set, of these data sets, I should say, or these exams, these were exams than the mean and standard deviation. That's why when I give you report outs in class of how people did on this exam, I don't send out mean and standard deviations. I always send out the five number summary. That's a fair uh, picture of how the data set looked for the class.